Hey, it's Nedling Daily, which is not a show about a guy named Net and a guy named Link and how they have a good legendary morning every day. It's a show summarizing the day's tech news. Just so we're straight. If you saw the last episode of Netlinked, or if you went on the internet at all this weekend, you're no doubt familiar with the WCRY or WannaCry or WannaCrypt ransomware that swept over 150 countries on Friday. The malware would have spread even more if it weren't for a 22-year-old researcher known as MalwareTech who discovered that WannaCry was pinging an unregistered web domain during the attack. He then registered for that domain name, which triggered WannaCry to stop infecting new machines. However, researchers have found versions of the malware that don't have this kill switch, so the immediate threat may not be over just yet. Microsoft has taken the unusual step of issuing a patch for not only Windows 10, but also Windows 8, 7, and even XP. They also wrote a blog post calling out security agencies like the NSA, which is where WannaCry actually originated, for not reporting Windows exploits to Microsoft when they find them, but rather hoarding them for their own use. And finally, Neil Mehta, a security researcher at Google, has shown that some code found in WannaCry is identical to code found in Cantopy, an exploit used by the Lazarus Group, a hacker collective with ties to North Korea. Lazarus was behind the massive Sony Pictures hack of 2014 and the $1 billion heist from Bangladesh's central bank one year ago. Whew! Well, that's uh, pretty much where the story stands at the time of filming. So, takeaways, update your dang computer. Uh, stay away from North Korea, and catch up on Mr. Robot so you're prepared the next time this happens. Okay, time for some lighter news. How about that? Anyways, we reported on leaked info concerning AMD's upcoming Whitehaven CPUs last week, but new information has come to light, man. Although obviously take this with a grain of salt. Whitehaven is apparently going to launch as Ryzen 9 Threadripper CPUs. Threadripper! Sounds very... 20th century, which is appropriate apparently as the lineup goes from the 10-core Ryzen 9 1955 to the 16-core 1998X. Are they named after years? I don't like that they don't end in a multiple of 5 or 10, I don't know. Ryzen 9 will reportedly use the SP3R2 socket with 4,094 pins, good gravy. Well, looks like the desktop CPU market is heading toward its most interesting period in years. I, for one, am ready to Rip some threads, dude. Hit the lip. Whoppa! Get pitted, my bro. Get get tubed with that multi-threaded performance. Froth a ripper, dude. Sorry. It's time for Quick Bites. Bits. Ah. Hey man, it's fine. Quick Quick Bites also works. May, it might be better even. Thanks for your submission. Send me a hashtag QuickBits on Twitter if the rest of you want to get yourself a netlink. A site called Digiworthy claims that a source within AMD has told them the company's Vega GPUs will launch in three flavors. The RX Vega Core for $399, the Vega Eclipse for $499, and the Vega Nova for $599, competing with the GTX 1070, 1080, and 1080 Ti, respectively. And no way of knowing this is true, right now, but interesting. Next, Google has unveiled Android Automotive, the successor of sorts to Android Auto, which will serve as a car's entire operating system, not just an app. But what about Apple CarPlay? Guess you'll have to throw your iPhone in the trash. With its kind. Samsung is going to include its personal assistant, mm, Bixby, in what else? Refrigerators. Mm, Bixby, make me a sandwich. That's not how fridges work, sir. Mm, Bixby, what did I say about making eye contact? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, Bixby. HTC is still making phones apparently, and the next one is the HTC 11 with a 5.5 inch 1440p display, Snapdragon 835, and a 3000 mAh battery. Look out for the official launch soon. Speaking of phones, Lenovo is apparently prepping nine phones for this year, including the Moto Z, X, G, E, and the Moto C, which starts at 97 bucks US, but won't be available in the US. Bummer. 
Lyft and Waymo are teaming up to kick Uber while it's down, launching a partnership to develop self-driving cars. It's touching, but I'm sure as soon as one of them can convince the AI cars to rise up against the other, they will. Netflix has blocked users with a rooted Android phone from installing their app, although some reports say you can still run the app just fine if it's already installed. Others say that Australians will find the concept that a phone can be rooted perplexing. And the Wall Street Journal reports that Nintendo will be bringing a Legend of Zelda game to mobile devices later this year. I hope it's not just Super Mario Run with a sword. And that's all I have to say on the matter. Sources for all of today's news stories can be found in the NCIX forum post linked in the description. Wow, two Bixby's in one day. Mmm, Bixby! Please be quick with that piss quick as I must not quit, but be quick to return to my business most quickly. Wow, that completely voice completely changed over the course of that. But that's, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles. Thank you, Chris the Burninator. If you have something you want us to say on Netlink, hashtag NCIX Yodog on Twitter like your mama taught you. <clears throat> hey, right now, if you make a purchase of over 500 bucks at an NCIX store, you'll get a free NCIX Tech Tips t-shirt like this one with my catchphrase, Central Pack. I didn't choose it. It chose me. You'll have to be in Canada since all of our stores are up here, but it's probably the best sales incentive I've ever heard of. Mm, yeah. There's no link to click for this because it's in store, so just remember it in your brain. And that's just about enough of this Netlink Daily episode. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Click over here for previous videos. Check us out on Twitter over there. But as always, like the video if you liked it. Comment below for fans with benefits. And subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. <sighs> what a day. What a day. I almost want to cry.